Hello learners, with the best wishes for today's learning, let us enter in our module number 22, which is Open Education Resources in Present Scenario of Indian Education and Indian Initiatives in Open Education Resources. The problem with today's education is the most educators are still teaching the way they were taught in the past, but the students are not like in the past. The education of the 21st century is in a deep changing process. And with a lot of changes in the technology market, in the industry and in social life, the things are also changing. The profile of the students nowadays is different from the generations in the past, both in terms of the interest in digital technology as well as the easy access of the virtual world. For the present generation, going to colleges is no longer a sign for successful career, but learning is. Learning can take place everywhere preferably in the virtual environment because it has more long-lasting effect. It is a new phenomenon which can be seen as a part or a larger trend towards openness in education at school and at college level both. Learning outcomes of the present module are the learners will be able to understand the importance of open education resources in teaching learning process. They will be able to understand the various aspects of benefits of using open education resources they will acquaint themselves with various initiatives regarding development of open education resources in India. They will be able to understand what are audio video open education resources as a category of OERs in India. They will be able to understand textual open education resources as a category of open education resources in India. Enthusiasts and protagonists of open education resources see these resources as a remedy for all the problems of education. These are defined as technologically enabled, open provision of open education resources for consultation, use and adaptation by a community of users for non-commercial purposes. They are typically made freely available over the web or the internet. Teachers and education institutions support course development by using them primarily but they can also be used directly by the students. Open education resource is digitized material offered freely and openly for educators, students, self-learners and researchers to use and reuse for teaching, learning and research purposes. They include learning content, software tools to develop, use and distribute content and implementation resources such as open licenses themselves. Free information is a fundamental right of every human and open education resources make it very much possible for people of all ages and backgrounds to learn more about the world around them and access the tools they need to improve their lives and livelihoods. How much helpful are the OERs? Let us discuss that. Open education resources are accessible to all anytime and anywhere. They are also economy friendly, thus saving money both for the teachers and the students as well. Open education resources help teachers to create their courses online. It also helps teachers to collaborate with each other, in turn enhancing the equality of education. It is an easier and faster way to spread the information worldwide. Open education resources help the students and teachers by keeping the teaching content up to date. It is very efficient and precise means of updation of knowledge. The users get what they are looking for on the website in a direct way. Easiness of access and use of websites, easiness of memorizing the navigation and use of websites is also a very important feature of open education resources. Sometimes in unfavorable circumstances also, they can be used to address the issue of cost, quality as well as equity. They are free of licensing restrictions that inhibit the quality education and their offspring massive open online courses MOOCs are becoming important factors in achieving the sustainable development goal. Quality education in the present decade, India has been experiencing the incremental growth of open education resources, where a number of national institutions have established open educational portals for providing nationwide access to their education resources. As majority of higher education and professional education programs in India are taught in English language, worldwide audiences, particularly who are located in developing countries, are benefiting from open education resources produced and hosted in India. Indian initiatives of open education resources. There are multitude of open education resources out there to choose from in India. 
These can be found by searching with regular search engines such as Google. It can be separated by content type into four groups, text-led, video-led, animation-led and multiple media. Open education resources based on quality includes self-published, reviewed, peer-reviewed and option of post-review. It is also based on authorship as well. Whether the content is created individually, open authored or collaborative work. Various other types of open education resources include full courses, course materials, modules, learning objects, open textbooks, openly licensed, often streamed videos, tests, softwares, other tools, materials or techniques are used to support access to knowledge. Although there is no consensus regarding open education resources categories, Creative Commons has a useful list that includes the following subtypes. First is digital learning objects, which are individual digital assets. Then digitalized object libraries, which are online collection of assets. Open educational resources encyclopedias, which are collaborative written reference materials and open online archives which are repositories of collected open education resources. Next is open textbooks which are free and adaptable texts. Then these are open coursewares, open online university courses and programs. Open education resources courses, these are some short time uh, short courses. Then open course archives which are libraries or indexes of courses and online tools that support the open community and apart from creative commons there is some other categories which are given by helen in 2005 according to him open education resources may be divided into the following categories first is open courseware and content open software tools which are like learning management systems then open material for e-learning capacity building of faculty members then repositories of learning objects and free educational courses. Apart from all these, Indian open educational resources can be broadly categorized as audiovisual open educational resources and textual open educational resources. There are some Indian open educational resources and initiatives taken in India which are targeted at school students, whereas most others are targeted at students of technical and vocational education and training. Tertiary education and lifelong learning also is scattered here. Some of the Indian open education resources initiatives are briefly categorized and described like this. First is audio visual open educational resources. Under this category, we can write NPTEL, which is National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. This is a collaborative initiative of Indian Institute of Technologies, IITs and the Indian Institutes of Sciences, ISC, with financial support from Ministry of Human Resource and Development, MHRD of Government of India. Its purpose is to provide access to recorded video lectures of different engineering disciplines. The lectures are delivered by senior teachers of IITs and ISC. NPTEL also provides access to some web-based courses containing structured text and graphics. Second is Learning Object Repository of Consortium for Educational Communication, CEC. CEC and its partner institutions produce videos for Gyan Darshan educational channels and EduSet. Some of these contents are archived at the Learning Object Repository. Most of the videos are of short duration. Next is OSCAR, OSCAR, Open Source Courseware Animations Repository. This is an initiative of the IIT Bombay in collaboration with National Mission for Education through Information and Communication Technology NME ICT. It aims at creating a repository of web-based interactive animations for teaching various concepts and technologies. It has already achieved goal of developing some reusable animations for secondary and senior secondary level education. The current goal of project OSCAR Oscar, is to continue to develop animations for tertiary level education. Next is e Kosh of IGNO. This is an initiative to provide open access to outstanding video lectures recorded at IGNO Studio for Gyan Darshan education channels. 
This YouTube channel maintains a IGNO broadcast archive where many interesting videos, lectures are preserved in streamed video format. Every school of IGNO has a presence in this online archive. Indian audiovisual OER seek to collaborate with international online streaming video portals such as YouTube and Meta Cafe. These free content hosting platforms give the Indian Open Education Resources initiatives freedom from maintaining their web servers with heavy load of video content. Thus, quality of contents are seamlessly available to the worldwide audiences as well as to the national level target groups. Next category is Textual Open Education Resources. Under this category, we may have certain subtypes like first is online textbooks of the National Council of Education Research and Training NCERT. NCERT publishes school textbooks and reference books based on the National Curriculum Framework 2005 of the MHRD. NCERT textbooks are considered as basic sources for designing curriculum in the state level school boards also. NCERT textbooks are now accessible online through its OER gateway. Second is e gyan Kosh of IGNO. This is an initiative of IGNO to provide open access to self-learning study materials developed for different academic programs. Self-learning materials produced by IGNO are widely used by curriculum designers and course writers of state open universities and other distance learning providers. These materials are also highly used by lifelong learner communities for various purposes such as preparation of competitive examinations, preparation of examinations also. EGAN Kosh is accessible to, to be registered as users only. However, the registration fees is no, nil. It is free of charge. Next is National Science Digital Library, NSDL, of the National Institute of Science Communication and Information Resources. NSDL contains popular science books and college level reference textbooks produced under the mandate of attracting young minds in science and mathematics education. It covers basic science subjects which are taught at degree level courses. These books are used by students, science teachers, teachers training institutes and activists of people's science movements. Fourth is Vidyanidhi. Vidyanidhi is a digital library and e-scholarship portal for thesis and dissertations. Vidyanidhi is a national digital library initiative of University of Mysore supported by the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research, Ford Foundation and Microsoft India. Vidyanidhi aims at enhancing visibility of Indian doctoral research through archiving and disseminating full text doctoral dissertations of researches submitted in Indian universities to a global audience. This is a national level initiative covering major Indian universities. And fifth is Rai Open Courseware. This is an initiative of the private education provider Rai Foundation, which is involved in imparting professional and vocational education. Rai Open Courseware provides access to learning resources developed for their distance learning students. Another way of organizing or categorizing open education resources is according to the level of functionality offered by open educational websites. Now, another category is directories. A directory provides list of open education resources and links to resources available elsewhere on the web. Examples include Cole's Open Educational Resources Directory and in the case of open access journals, the Directory of Open Access Journal, DOAJ, which links to research articles in the same way. Next category is Platforms. By platform, we mean specific digital tools designed to do something with the open educational resources. This could include tools to develop new or adapt existing open educational resources. Alternatively, the platform could be designed to license new open education resources with an open license. An example of the former is Wiki Educator, which provides an online environment for authoring new resources. Next is Repository. A repository is a database or a collection of open education resources, usually once developed by a particular institution. Some of the well-known examples of an institutional repository are MIT's Open Courseware Repository, Creative Commons Search, Open Education Resources Commons, and Merlot. Next category is 
supplemental materials. These open educational resource materials can include lecture notes, lesson plans, PowerPoint presentations, assignments and activities. PEPFET and Open Education Resource Commons are examples of it. They provide information regarding interactive math and science simulations with lesson plans and activities. A large collection of various types of textbooks, courses and ancillary materials is also present. Next category is Multimedia. Creative Commons Search, Vimeo and Flickr are under this category. Creative Commons provides various types of media, videos and with CC licenses, Creative Commons licenses and photos under Creative Commons licenses. Flickr also allows searching by the type of the license. Despite of these mentioned Indian government initiatives, there are some barriers which are an obstacle in open educational resource movement. First is lack of knowledge about copyright issue. A huge number of open education resources are available on the internet. Even then, people don't use them. It is all because of lack of awareness about copyright issues. Next is inadequate training about the use of available resources. There is no adequate training about the use of open education resources as a part of formal training for teachers, students and the researcher. Next is issue of quality. Accountability for the quality concerns always lies with the author producing the open education resource and there is no any formal check on the quality of materials produced. And the next barrier is issues relating to the language. Most of the open education resource content available is in English language only. So its expected benefits remains restricted to a particular class of people. Much of other issue is related to cultural diversity. Cultural diversity has always invaded the type and quality of open education resource produced. And the next is contextual gap. Most of the open education resource are in digital form. Although some are printable too, without considering contextual gap, they are generated for use at global platform. So it is also an obstacle in the use of open education resources. So let us summarize what we have discussed yet. In conclusion, it can be positively said that India has started to move in the direction of using open education resources. Several contributions have been made by distance learning universities, open universities. They have become the major creator in the field of open resources. Government initiatives in the form of contributions provided by InFlipNet and NIC, National Informatics Center, have helped the stakeholders of higher education community. Premier academic institutes have also created repositories of learning objects like eGurukul, a repository built at the Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur. As these are now part of curriculum, young professionals are now born and bred in this culture of sharing the wealth of knowledge. With the hope of sharing open education resources, now we are concluding this module. Thank you and I hope we all have enjoyed this lecture.